Well, good evening. Glad you're able to join us tonight at Germantown Christian Center. And I know like anything else, you're expecting to get blessed, hear the word, and hopefully get some inspiration tonight. Because after all, we say this is the night or this is the day the Lord hath made. We're supposed to rejoice and be glad in it. And we're hoping that's what's going on wherever you are right now. A couple quick things to make mention of. Um, we're glad you're here. And I hope that whatever's going on right now, you can take a moment of time. Clear, just clear your mind. I don't know what today held for you. Uh, you know, it's like in just living in life in, in this world kind of gets crazy at times. You know, you've got maybe the kids, the job, you know, responsibilities around the house, things that have to be taken care of. Maybe your kids are getting ready to go to school. And uh, in my case, my son's getting ready to go to college. And, you know, that just presents a whole other set of opportunities for both him and us. And uh, so, you know, a lot of times you just, you just get overwhelmed if you're not careful. So I just want to take a moment and just breathe. Take a moment and just, just give it to God. Just thank him for his goodness and his mercy. And that everything that's going on right now, guess what? It's not above his ability, not above his, even above the desire that God has to intertwine his life with yours. And to show you that he has wisdom available to you and peace. Thank God for his peace. So let's just exhale and let's believe God that he's going to speak to your hearts and show you how strong and magnificent he is both tonight and in the days ahead. So before we do anything else, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and we honor you. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice in it, Father. We thank you for your goodness, for your presence within our lives. We also thank you, Father, that you have given us your solemn promise that you would never, never, never ever turn your back on us, never leave us or forsake us. So, Father... We embrace your love, we embrace your peace, and we embrace your help tonight in our lives. Speak to us, move your, through us your life and your, and your help and assistance toward others. Allow our lives to be an influence so that we might be a blessing to others. 
And Father, we ask you now that you would create in us just that continued love and desire to chase after you, to know what you know, and to, well, Father, Father, follow your instructions so we fulfill the purpose that you created in us. Father, we thank you for healed bodies and well minds, and we praise you and glorify your name above everything else going on. To your glory and honor, we say in Jesus' name, amen and amen. A couple quick things. We're going to study the word. We're going to get in the word. So if you have something to look at, whether it be an iPad, a Bible, whatever it is that you have, start opening up, if you don't mind, to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4 and the 30th verse. You know, we are, we've been looking at the things that we need to do in order to more correctly hear and do what God wants in our lives. You know, we all want to hear the voice of God. I mean, we have a lot of voices speaking to us. I mean, you know, I've talked earlier about you got your kids and you got your spouse and you got your boss and you got all these other things speaking and yelling at you. But yet we need to be attuned to that still small voice. That is the voice of our spirit. That's God talking to us of what he wants us to do. We can be led, not driven. And I know you hear that a lot if you listen to these broadcasts, that God leads his sheep, his children. He doesn't drive us. You know, cattle are driven, but sheep are led. Make sure you're listening to God's still small voice and being led, purposeful in your choices and decisions, not being driven, not being forced, not being compelled to do something because you just feel like, I just have to. No, you need to be a, create a stillness inside of your life. Even though there can be turmoil around you, you can say, you know what, peace be still. There is, there is peace in my spirit. There is a peace within me. And I want to purposefully not only discover the will of God, but carry it through to completion. Paul said it time and time again, I am, I'm running my course, I'm doing it with joy. We need to know that every day that we live for God, we should be able to do it with joy. Not drudgery, not something like, well, I've got to, I need to. It's like, I get to. I get to get up today. I get to do something today that's going to further the design that God has placed in my life. That ought to be where we need to be and use your faith to get there. You know, there, there's going to be days you're not going to feel like that. Guess what? Get your body in line. Get your mind in line. Command in the name of Jesus that you're going to live right and act right. Just, just, just right now, use your faith, your trust, your confidence in God to take hold of you and say, Father, I'm going to live up to your expectations for my life, and I refuse to go any lower. I'm going to shoot for your perfect will, and I know that, Father, with your help, we can see it come to pass in Jesus' name. That, that's our responsibility. That's an opportunity. It's a goal that we should set for ourselves each day. So here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the, unto the day of redemption. You know, we talk so much about doing the will of God. Folks, when you're not doing the will of God, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. I, I like to put it this way, I'm hurting the feelings of God. Now tell the truth, have you ever had your, your feelings hurt? I mean, I have. I, I don't know. I mean, we get our feelings hurt. We don't necessarily like it, though. And it, it, it's a shame because you ever notice that your feelings get hurt and it hurts the most when it's from someone you love? You know, God loves you. He cares desperately for you. And what we don't really fully understand is that when we just miss it, you know, that's a euphemism for sin, but when we miss it, when we just don't necessarily do exactly what he wants the way he wants us to do it, we're hurting the feelings of God. We're bringing disappointment to him. Now, he still loves us, still cares about us, but we're, we're disappointing him. You know, you've been on the receiving end, undoubtedly, of being disappointed in somebody that maybe loves you and you love them, and it doesn't feel good. Don't bring that type of feeling to God either. Do your very best to say, Father, I want to please you. I want to serve you. I want to honor you. I want to live my life by faith. And so in Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, the nice thing about it is my walk with God is secure. We're sealed. We are, we are fully fit together and joined together with him by the Holy Spirit. You know, you, you won't be able to find in my spirit, you won't be able to find where I, I end and the Holy Ghost begins. We're, it's like we become one with the Father. Jesus, it was his prayer that he prayed, Oh, Father, I pray that they will be one with you the way I am one with you. You know, we are together. We are united with him. And that's just supernatural. It's awesome. But it also is a responsibility. And so here we're told that we shouldn't go ahead and block what the Spirit is trying to do through us. So make the decision right now in your life and each day. Father, my goal and desire is not to grieve you, not to disappoint you. I want to enthuse you. I want you to absolutely be tickled pink 
by my, but by what I'm doing and the way that I'm endeavoring to serve you. Now, I may not always be perfect, but it won't be for a lack of trying. And if we live that way honestly before him, you don't have to worry about grieving the Holy Spirit. Now, in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, it puts it a little differently. We're told here in this short little verse, it says, quench not the Spirit. He said, what is quenching me? Well, I think we've all quenched a fire before, haven't we? If you ever, had, if you ever started a campfire, or maybe you, you, know, you maybe started a fire in your house on purpose, you know, on purpose, uh, in your fireplace, you know, and if you're not careful, if you just don't keep feeding it, it goes out. If you don't keep putting fire on the fireplace, the fire eventually just, just burns itself out. The embers may be still glowing for a while, but eventually it just peters out, and the next thing you know, you've got no heat, no fire, and you've got to go over the process again. If you wanted to have fire, that is. Well, quenching not the spirit means don't put it out. Just keep it going. And here's what we can do each and every day to keep our faith vibrant in him. Make sure every single opportunity that you can have in your life, every trial, every circumstance, every just look at them as an opportunity. And that takes a change in your spirit, a change in your outlook. The problems we face each day, we can call them problems or we can just simply just make a change of outlook. It's an opportunity for God to show himself faithful in my life. Now you say, well, what does that mean? Many of us, I'm sure you face difficulty in your flesh, in your body, let's say. Have you ever gotten your body just not agreeing with you? Have you ever got your body that just says you're sick or you're, you're hurting, you're, you're in pain? You know, we talked about your emotions in areas that you just, you know, have you ever, ever gotten just discouraged? Well, you know, I think most everybody has it sometime or another. But then you've got to make a decision. Am I going to stay here or am I going to do something about it? You see, what we need to do is to make sure that in every opportunity we have, we call it as an opportunity to see God move through us and in us, as opposed to a situation, a circumstance that we just say, well, I don't know, I guess this is just my lot in life. I guess I just, you know, and, and what happens is we're not embracing the help of God. See, if we'll keep sowing into our spiritual life and development, and that's why you keep reading the Word, that's why you keep studying the Bible, that's why we live in the epistles of the New Testament, you know, those letters of Paul, we live in that, in those, we, we live our life in there. You know, we've said it time and time again, if you need wisdom, you know what, folks, there's some great places to go for wisdom. The book of James tells us what to do when we need wisdom, and yet so do people don't do it. The Bible says in James chapter 1, if you need wisdom, you should be asking God for it. But sometimes in life we ask everybody else before we get God's opinion on an issue. You know, you've heard the, you've heard the thing, well, I'm going to run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. Instead of running something up the flagpole, why don't you go ahead and run it up the prayer pole? Why don't you go ahead and just bring it up to the top authority and say, Heavenly Father, I'm going to find out what you say in your word that addresses the concerns I have about this in the name of Jesus. And then take it to the Father and reveal it to him. Show it to him. Father, you've said in your word and give the scriptures. These are ways you can stop from quenching the spirit, the move of the spirit through our lives. By what? Throwing some logs on the fire. Keeping it burning, even in times where the devil and circumstances and even your flesh at times are trying to put water upon your fire, your flame to serve God. You know, we are living right now, you've heard it, and I'm sure you're about sick and tired of hearing about this. But y have you heard something about COVID? Have you heard something about that China virus that, 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 you, that you hear about? Well, let me clue you in. It's still not above the authority in the name of Jesus. And yet what happens is, if we're not careful, we begin to think that, some, that something like that supersedes the authority of the name of Jesus. i got news for you. You can have a successful Christian life in the midst of whatever's going on around you. Folks, you can serve God, please God, even if the local authorities say you need to wear a mask. Doesn't stop me witnessing, and it shouldn't have to stop you either. You know, we can use any excuse we want to of why we can't serve God and be productive in our faith in the midst of whatever circumstance, whether it be COVID or anything else. But folks, that's just an excuse. I'm told, and you are as well in the Word of God, that, that, that I have the ability, the strength that Jesus provides because of my walk with God. I can do all things through Christ because He gives me strength. I'm telling you right now, invite that strength into your life. If you know Jesus, you have access to that strength. If you don't, then ask Jesus to come into your life right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I need you. I need, I need you to fill me with your spirit. But if you're a believer, you've done that, then you have access to this. So we shouldn't be quenching the spirit of God. We ought to be doing everything we do each and every day to say, Father, I want to help you. Father, I want to further your plans for my life. And I refuse to let the plans of the devil interfere with the plans of the Most High God. 
So guess what? You ought to live zealously for him. You ought not be afraid. You ought to be living confidently and boldly. And you know what, folks? It's just a joy to take that opportunity. I saw something, you know, just momentarily. I was going through Facebook today, and, and, and I saw a picture of somebody here in our city. And it struck me as being just, just something we've all done, but it, it was a visual representation of something that maybe we could do better. And all it was was, a, was a, a picture of a squad car, a police car here in our city. And the caption read this, said, uh, whoever it is that's in squad car number, and they live this squad car number, said, I want you to know that I pray. Well, I'm stopped at the stoplight, was they, they, everyone was. I prayed for you and your family, for your protection and your safety and your blessing, that God would move in your heart and create in him, create in you his heart and, and manifest his ability in you. And, and they put that out there. And, and it was just an opportunity to let people know, you know, folks, we can be so much more significant than we are right now. And you can be significant sitting in your car at a red light. And yet sometimes we let opportunities and things just pass us by. Don't even see it. Don't seize that. To me, that's ways that we can not quench the spirit. Now, I don't know who that person was. I, I don't remember offhand. I, you know, it was something that, 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 that just struck me, though, as being, hey, that's, that's a woman who gets it. Folks, I will tell you, you can get it too. Wherever you are, there's plenty of opportunities to flourish and be a blessing to others. In this case, sit in your car at a red light. A lot of us just waste that time, don't we? You know, we just, you know, don't, don't seize the opportunity. All I'm telling you is do things each and every day, even in those little moments of time that seemingly are just fleeting and gone, to not quench the spirit, but rather do the opposite. Not quench it, but to, it just to help bring it ablaze, to increase it, as it were. Those are little things that do make a difference. Be creative. I know you are. In fact, I know many of you are very creative. You know, we, we've got people that are, that are in business, have the individual businesses, run your own small business, run your own medium or big size business. I got news for you. You have creative abilities that are not given to you just because of who you are, but God put them inside of you. Watch you bring and tap a little bit of those things. Ask God to amplify it, to reveal himself through your spirit, that you can discern it and then seize those things and bring them to pass. All I'm trying to say is these are things we can do each and every day so we don't quench the spirit. And then here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, you know, it, 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 we're given encouragement that we shouldn't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. You've heard this before. And people always think about the vile and the profane. But, but, but at all times in life, we need to realize we don't attribute the work of God to anyone else. And one of the things that I could say is the reverse of it. Don't, don't sit there and not give God glory for what God is doing. A lot of us are easily able to identify the work of the devil. You know, uh, some people identify or say that the, the devil's work is anything that doesn't agree with us. Well, let me tell you, you can't really use that definition. What, what you need to say is what's, what's in the word? What is the will of God is defined in his word? But so too often, it's a shame to say, but we don't give God credit when credit is due. When God's doing something around you, we ought to not say, well, that doesn't seem like much. We ought to realize if it's anything God doing, it doesn't matter. It's a big thing. It should be a big deal. Look for ways, look for areas, look for things that God's doing in your life and be quick to give him praise for it. If you live that way, you'll be amazed how much more gratitude you have. How much, to be honest with you, it just it helps your walk, your relation, your fellowship with God. It really does. Because you're looking for God to do something. You're looking to acknowledge his greatness and his power. Have you noticed that not everybody does that? We live in a world that's pretty self-absorbed. I'm, I'm sure you know this is true. People always want to loud or praise themselves. You know, praise me. I got news for you. That really is pretty distasteful because you're limiting what God can do through, through a person like that. You really are. But if we're looking to praise him, acknowledge him, looking for what God is doing and give him glory for it, not only are we not quenching the spirit, we're doing the opposite, but also what we're doing is we're walking in step, looking for God to take hold of, of maybe us. We're, we're acknowledging God's involved in every little decision of our lives. We're letting him be that way. So I don't know what decisions you might be facing right now. 
And I'm sure we can immediately think of the big ones. You know, I mentioned to you just a moment ago or a few minutes ago, we'll be sending our, our son. He's going to be in town here, but he's going to be living in the dorm. And he'll be living in college. And you say, you know, that's a huge thing, and that is. But the reason why we're able to do that confidently is because there have been, over the years, lots of little things that have been put in him. And so you and I need to realize and recognize that there may be some big things maybe that you have to decide upon in your life, but you ought to look back and realize that God has prepared you for what you're going through right now. God, by faith, has positioned you to be able to make the right choices, the right decisions, and see his, right, his godly and right hand working through you. And so instead of, you know, so many times we do, we kind of maybe freak out. You don't need to do that. You ought to be able to say, hey, hallelujah, Father, your help and your guidance is in me. You have brought me to this place. And with your help, Father, we shall see this through. It's amazing what somebody, a woman or a man of faith, can do in a circumstance. While others are saying jump ship and yet one man or one woman stands up and says, it's okay, peace be still. I believe you're that type of person. I believe you're the person, you're that type of man or woman that stand up in the bow of your, of your boat and say, peace be still, just like Jesus did. And of course, others were amazed. They said, who is this man that even the seas and the ways obey, obey his voice, obey his command? But I got news for you. That same Jesus that stood in that bow of that boat is the same Jesus Christ that lives inside of your heart. And when you and I embrace that and recognize that's the case, that as the word of God teaches us, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means as Jesus was, so is he today in you. Now that's something to shout about. And that's something to change a person's life. And so we need to strive for that. It means just put some effort towards it. I'm trying to encourage you this evening. Because undoubtedly, some of you need to be encouraged. So let's look at what he says. Very quickly here. James chapter 3 verse 17 puts it this way. The wisdom that is first from above is pure and peaceable and gentle, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now think about that for a moment. How would you like that kind of wisdom? Unbiased, un unashamed, favored toward you. Exactly what is needed for that moment. Easily entreated. In other words, you can get it easily. You know, there's a lot of things in life that aren't easy to get. But then there are things that are easy to get. People always say, well, if it's easy to get, it must not be worth much. I got news for you. That's not true when it comes to God. Salvation is pretty easy to get, pretty expensive to provide it, but pretty easy for you and I to get it. It was provided to us. All we need to do is ask, and it's ours, or so is wisdom. And every one of us today needs wisdom. Somebody once told me, he said, you know, I said, can you define wisdom? And he came out of my mouth and said, I said, wisdom for you is the best way to do something. And he looked at me, so how'd you know? I said, I know, I just, he said, I, that's what I'm asking for. I, I, I've got something going on in his business. He said, I just, I'm, I'm struggling on, on the way I should do it. I said, well, guess what? God's telling you that he's got wisdom for you. It's the best way for you of how to do it. And, and his story was, was kind of not unique. It, it was, you know, everybody does it. He went to everybody he knew and asked them their opinion. And every one of them had an opinion. Well, I think you ought to do it this way. Well, I think you ought to do it. This is the way I do it. This is the way, you know. And it, none of it just sat right with them. I said, have you asked God? And he goes, and, and, and this guy was a Christian. But, you know, sometimes good Christian folks are still limited to our minds. You know, you know, especially like in things like we said in business and areas. And, and, and uh, I said, why don't you just ask God? Have you specifically? Well, I, I've said I need help. I said, have you prayed? Have you sat down specifically and brought it before? No. I said, well, why don't you start there? You know, now I know we laugh about it. We think, well, of course you should. You know, sometimes those easy things are the things that elude, elude us the most. I want to ask you a question right now. Have you done the first easiest step? Have you asked God for help? Do you need wisdom? Have you asked him for some wisdom from that he knows? He goes, rest assured, he knows it better than anybody else on this world will ever know it. He knows you because he made you. 
Are there something you're going through right now that's just eating at you that you just say, I, I, need, I need help? I hope you're asking him for help because you see, that's where our help, true help comes from. All these things, these things we're striving and, and working for and desiring that the seed come to pass. You got to under, understand all those things emanate first and foremost from the heart and the hand of God. And so if we don't want to quench the spirit, we need to make sure that we're asking him first above everything and everyone else. Let's get his input on something. Instead of coming up and here's our plan and then when it doesn't work so well, then ask God, to, can you bless it anyway? Why don't we come up with what he wants us to do, how he wants us to do it, how he wants to, 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 to derive significance in our lives through it. Because understand this, the thing God's done, that God wants to do through your life doesn't come at the expense of others. When God blesses his kids, it doesn't, it doesn't come at the expense of another kid. God wants to prosper you and bless you. But as the Bible says, it is the Lord that honors you with riches. And, and he doesn't add sorrow to it as well. You never have to apologize for the blessing of God in your life. And you never have to be sorry for the way it was provided to you. If you're like me, and I think you probably are, we just want to serve God to the best of our ability. We want him to work his good pleasure through us. And we don't want to quench the spirit. So what do you need to do? Well, quickly, let's, let, let's get to this, and then we'll kind of tie this up a little bit here. Make sure that out of your mouth is coming good things, as we mentioned. Don't speak confusion. Don't speak doubt and unbelief. Don't allow those things to come out of you. If you're not aware of, a, of an answer to a circumstance, instead of blathering out how you don't know, why don't you just shut your mouth and go to prayer about it? Why don't you go ahead and get the word out and say, Father, I need some wisdom from you. Here's where you said you promised. And get it from God. All too often it's, sh it's a shame to say, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and, and just misuse our mouths instead of speaking faith and the power of God. What we do is sometimes we're, we're speaking the opposite. Make sure you're not that type of person, okay? And we're told here in Ephesians 4.32 to be kind to one another. You know, I think that's something that every one of us could maybe do a little better job about. Um, we, we seem to be in short supply of kindness in this world. And we come up with every reason why we're maybe we're short with somebody, we're not kind to them. But when you get right down to it, the Bible says here in Ephesians 4.32, and be kind to one another. It didn't say be kind to one another when it's convenient. Be kind to one another when everything's going great. Oh, be kind to one another when you got plenty of time and all the things on your to-do list are completed. It just said be kind to one another, but he didn't stop there. Either. Then what else he said? Tender-hearted. You know, we don't need to be callous against people or towards people. You know, this is forgiving one another. Well... I'm sure you can say, well, you're right. We, people need to be forgiven towards me. After all, you, you know, man, that's not what he's saying. He's talking about you forgiving others. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. See, Paul is showing us how to reflect that life and that person and that love of Jesus Christ and reflect it to others. And you do it even when things necessarily aren't going necessarily for you, but because you know something. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. You know that you've got God working for you. You know that, that, that no matter what else goes on, you know you have God himself, the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. You have his ability, his strength, his Holy Spirit that lives within your life, taking hold of you, directing your steps, manifesting his glory through your life. And he is now walking out day by day his good pleasure in you. And you shall receive what it is that you're believing him to do. And so you're not being distracted. And you're not going to let these other things deter your eyes or your thoughts or your actions or your words from praising his name and honoring him with a life well lived. In short, all these things matter because it's part of the will of God for our lives. Well, it's about 7.30, at least, you know, about 30 minutes, we say. And I'm sure you've got a lot going on. But I hope maybe a few things that we cover tonight might resonate and speak to you. 
I have no doubt that you want God to do something big in your families, in your life, in your job situations. I, 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 I mean, every one of us does. And you ought to expect him to do it. I want you to believe him. I, seriously. Put yourself in a position to say, Father, I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. I'm asking you to speak to me. And I, I love this because, see, God knows you better than anyone else. And he knows exactly what he has to say, what he, how he has to get it across to you. The fact is, God knows you better than you know yourself. Believe him to use whatever means he has to, to convey his will and his wisdom to you. And there'll be good things. God's a good giver. A good, uh, he's a good God. And ask him to use you. Not just for your own blessing, but also to be a blessing to somebody else. In short, live your life for him. Acknowledge him in what you're doing. Making sure you're praising and looking for anything that's around you that you can say, oh, that's the hand of God. Give him glory for it. Give him glory. And seize those moments, those little tiny moments in your life. And don't let them be wasted. Those 30 seconds, that minute, whatever it might be in your life throughout your day, take that as an opportunity to do something that helps further your spiritual growth for him. In doing so, not only will you not grieve the spirit, but you'll thrill the Spirit of God. You'll bring joy to God. He'll take his good pleasure in you. You won't disappoint him. It's nice to know that, isn't it? Hallelujah. Well, I want to pray with you before we go. And enjoy our hearts together by faith to believe that God will do some of these things for you. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father, we thank you for your love that is never taken for granted. And part of that expression of your love is you've given us forgiveness. Father, you've said to us, you've told us, as, as we've read in the Bible, in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, that if anybody has, has done anything, any, committed any sin whatsoever, Father, all they need do is to ask you for forgiveness, and you would forgive them. In fact, you would cleanse them, Father, from all that unrighteousness. Because you are so faithful. You are so just. Father, I pray right now for every single person that if, that, if, if there is something in life that's trying to bring hindrance to their ability to, to seek after you, to follow after you, to acknowledge you, Father, in these little things of life as well as the big, I pray, Father, right now, they're releasing it to you. They're releasing it right now. Father, they're releasing it to you in Jesus' name. And I pray for them. Father, take hold in their life and show them the magnificence of a life lived with Jesus. Manifest in them, Father, your character. Show them the, the unlimited power that's available to them, not to live to their flesh, but, Father, to be able to, well, declare their faith in you. Father, I thank you that they're not quenching nor grieving your spirit, but living for you, Father, Showing a vibrancy. Showing an excitement each day to get up and live for Christ. We thank you, Father. I thank you for healed bodies and well minds in the name of Jesus. We command in the power that is the name of Jesus Christ that you have said in your word that, that, that there is no need for a sick or an affirm to be among your children. And I, Father, pray that if there be anybody who needs a healing in their body, that, Father, you have said in your word that these are the signs that shall follow in Mark 16. Those that believe in one of which would they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Father, I pray if there's anybody that needs a touch from you in their body. That, Father, they place their hand upon their body right now as a point of contact. And, Father, they thank you right now. Just say thank you, Father, for my healing in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it and we honor you. In that glorious name that is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord, your Son, our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I thank you for joining us tonight, and I'm very appreciative of you taking the time out of your, your schedule to be a part of our service. Um, you'll see on the screen some things that might, might appeal to you, might be a blessing. It would be a blessing to us and to you if you'd like to support this, this ministry with your giving. 
there's several things on there that you can look at and and uh, I ask you to think about it, pray about it. We could use your help and we'll use it wisely. It'll be of a blessing and a benefit to others as this is being a benefit to you undoubtedly. And so uh, if, if that's something you're led to do, then go ahead and do it and we'll thank you for it. And uh, also let us know if we can do something for you. If you need prayer, something that is coming up in your life you'd like us to pray about, the information of contact is on the screen as well. Please take advantage of, of this. We are here, quite literally, we are here for you. And uh, I, just, I just want you to know that, that we're praying and believing with you and expecting to hear good things from you, so let us know, please. Well, we're going to be back here Sunday morning at 1030 Central Time, and if you'd like to be a part of it, we'd love to have you. You can also join us on our YouTube channel. It's Germantown Christian Center, as well as, of course, on Facebook, the same name, Germantown Christian Center. So just want to say to you, I guess, good night. God bless you. Glad you came to be a part of us. And I just pray until we see each other again, just remember, all things are possible to him that believes. So go out and believe God and see him move in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye.